All right, everybody, welcome back to The Infinite today. Really glad to have you here on the channel. We have a bunch of Apple news to cover um, of things that have happened in this last week, but also things that are at the upcoming Apple event in October. So we're gonna cover all of that huge range of things. We're gonna start with the Mac, then we're gonna go to the iPhone, and then Apple Watch, iPads, and then a speed round. Yep, that's right. Okay, let's do this. First of all, and I know that I said I wouldn't make a video about this, so I didn't. Apple did release new iMacs this week. No redesign. Um, but honestly, these are still the best iMacs that Apple's ever released. I mean, if we weren't already expecting a redesign, we would see these new iMacs and our jaws would probably hit the floor because these are very, very, very impressive iMacs with up to a 10 core processor, obviously still an Intel core processor, so it's not yet Apple Silicon, but you also have up to an eight terabyte internal storage, which now matches what you can get on MacBooks. You have a better FaceTime camera, in fact, the best in any Mac ever, 1080p, plus it's smarter, so it does a better job at lighting your face versus the background. It also has the new studio quality mics that we always hear about that are in the new iPad Pros, as well as the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, most of these improvements are for the 27-inch iMac and not the 21.5-inch iMac. One rumor suggests that this is because the 21.5-inch iMac will be refreshed before the 27-inch iMac, and that'll be happening later this year. It'll become a 23-inch iMac, and it'll be one of the first Apple Silicon iMacs, but I'm not too sure about that, so we'll just have to wait and see. The other huge thing that did come to the iMac is a nano texture display. So for $500, as opposed to the $1,000 option on the Pro Display XDR, you can actually get a nano texture display on the iMac. That means that it's basically anti-glare, anti-reflective, using minuscule etching into the display. Now this is super impressive. It looks amazing on the Pro Display XDR, as I can attest from WWDC 2019 when I was there. And that is now on the iMac as well. In other news, macOS Big Sur public beta is now available. I've been using beta 4 over the last few days. It's a lot better than what we had before. It's, there's a lot of huge improvements in beta 4, and it's finally the first beta of macOS Big Sur that is actually really usable. So that's really good news. And I would recommend upgrading to it. In fact, one of the biggest things in macOS Big Sur beta is I, folks, I have some really great news. You can finally delete Google Chrome from your MacBook because Safari now supports 4K playback of YouTube videos. So I'll show you an example now. Okay, so you can see here that we are now actually watching one of my videos and we are in 4K playback. Boom, you see that 4K option right there? This is in Safari on macOS Big Sur, 4K YouTube. And new reports on Apple Silicon MacBook pricing are saying anything from $800 to $1,100, which would be more in the price range of what we see right now in MacBook Airs. But $800 MacBooks would be really interesting and something that Apple could use to bring more people over to the Mac, um, especially as they transfer to Apple Silicon. I mean, these are gonna be the best laptops on the market. These are gonna be the best laptops that you can get of any computer. That's also why I think that they made the Mac OS design language more similar to iOS is because people that already own iPhones, why don't they have a Mac for college, you know? People are still buying PCs and, and stuff like that. So the Mac right now owns a very, very small percentage of the market and that could really grow once they switch over to Apple Silicon and maybe change up the prices a little bit. Okay, next up we're gonna go on to the iPhone. Now iPhone 12, obviously it has been delayed until October, which has been confirmed by Apple themselves. iPhone 12 Pro Mac, is most likely what the name would be for the largest iPhone 12 Pro, but a new rumor says that it could be called the iPhone 12 Plus and iPhone 12 Pro Plus. I personally don't think that they're gonna do this just because the Plus naming now specifically refers to one of Apple's services that gives you more content than you can get with the base version. Apple TV Plus, Apple News Plus, I don't think that they're gonna go back to the iPhone Plus naming like they did with the iPhone 8 Plus, things like that, because it no longer makes sense with Apple's services business. Next up, a new rumor says that there could be this interesting magnet design in the back of the iPhone, and not only the iPhone, but also Apple's officially branded Apple Silicon cases. Now, at first you might be wondering, well, what would magnets be used for on the iPhone? Well, if you think about the iPad with 129 magnets in the back of the iPad to hold on the smart connector, these magnets in the iPhone could be used for a lot of different reasons. But the shape that it's in gives us a really interesting idea that it could be used in Apple's upcoming air power charger. Now, if you've ever used a wireless charger, you know that it can be a little bit finicky at times trying to get your phone in the right place so that it starts charging. So magnets in the back of the iPhone, along with corresponding magnets and Apple's upcoming air power wireless charger could mean that your iPhone would click right into place when you slide it onto the wireless charging mat 
and then you always know through tactile feedback and also just through the fact that it would auto correct itself that your iPhone will charge on wireless no matter what. Now this is also in preparation for Apple to release a portless iPhone in the upcoming years. And now I have to bring up some of the bad news because more and more we're seeing rumors and reports that 120 hertz on the iPhone 12 and 12 Pro are not happening. Now, apparently the display panels that Apple's using in the iPhones are actually capable of 120 hertz because they are supplied by Samsung and Apple bought the displays to be able to do that. But the problem is the IC driver that's going to be included in the iPhone. Now, what is an IC driver you might wonder? Well, let me save you the trouble. An IC driver stands for an integrated circuit driver, which is usually used to control motors and autonomous robots. The important information here is that motor driver ICs act as an interface between microprocessors and the motors. So with Apple not including IC drivers that are pushing 120 hertz per second, even after a software update, the iPhone 12 Pro will be incapable of 120 hertz per second. So. That's the bad news. But let's finish this off with more good news. The iPhone 13 will probably have 120 hertz refresh rate. Also new reports show that the iPhone 13 cameras could support up to 8K video. So that's something to look forward to. Also newer reports show that the smaller notch will not be happening. We'll be keeping the same size notch, which makes more sense to me. Apple doesn't usually do small little incremental upgrades like that when it comes to design. They'll usually go with big, bold new designs. And so I can't see them slowly sh shrinking the notch until it just goes Away. they're just gonna it's just gonna go away one day all right let's move on to the Apple watch shall we now we already know that the new Apple watch is coming in a navy blue color so that's super exciting because obviously that is the best color in the world also new reports say that the Apple watch series 6 will have smaller bezels haven't heard about that before plus we just barely talked about not shrinking the notch so I'm skeptical but one thing that I'm less skeptical about is that the Apple Watch Series 6 will not support force touch which is where when you press on a display you can press in harder and it reacts differently now on watch OS 7 what we see is just long press it's not force touch where you press harder it's just long press where you press longer super boring but i can basically confirm the rumor that the apple watch series 6 will not have force touch because it's not even included in the new software so my apple watch series 5 that is technically capable of force touch can no longer even do it with the new watch os so kind of annoying but let's go on to some good news shall we Actually, that's all the news I had for the Apple Watch, so we're just going to have to leave it at that. Let's go on to iPad, shall we? Okay, fourth generation iPad. Now, dang it, I wish I had more good news for you here. The iPad Air, right? We were waiting for the, later this year, hopefully in October, with the Apple event. But new rumors say that the iPad will not be coming out until March 21st. Sorry, March 2021. So, that's also. But, hey, I... I'm gonna wait. So if you'd like to wait with me, you are definitely welcome to, but still looking forward to this. Again, this is most likely going to have a redesign to look more like the iPad Pro and come included with Face ID and the second generation Apple Pencil. Okay, now we're on to our speed round and here we go. Speaking of the Apple Pencil, the new Apple Pencil is rumored to come in space grace it'll probably come out with the ipad air fourth generation in march of 2021 if not october of this year please also i can't believe that i didn't report on this earlier but sometime in the last couple of weeks apple has released a new type of gift card which is actually a universal apple gift card the gift card for everything apple um so i don't know why this didn't happen earlier also i apologize for not reporting on this earlier but the new gift card is great so it works on the app store it works for apple products everything before you had separate gift cards for apple products hardware and software now it's just one gift card for everything so that's great plus they look cool next up more rumors suggest that airpods studio which are the over ear headphones that apple is developing will be coming in october with the apple event more on airpods a new report from apple insider suggests that in the future apple could be using bone conduction to relay your sound rather than pushing airwaves i mean we are literally like if you didn't think we're living in the future well we are now because airpods have bone conduction <laughs> okay a new really interesting report and again we are really in the future because soon iPhones will actually be able to clean themselves using UV sterilization so they can produce their own UV rays and actually clean the screen clean the back of the phone clean the entire phone by themselves <laughs> okay and last of all a report talks about Apple adding 
zoom like background replacement so if you're on a zoom call right you can replace your background with all kinds of things side note you can also add snapchat filters to zoom and my friend once added the potato snapchat filter to his face and then created a background full of a table of potatoes but apple is also adding these zoom like backgrounds to the apple glass so you'd be able to blur out the background while you see other information it's kind of like noise cancellation for vision Anyways, guys, that's all for today. I really appreciate all of your support on the channel. Please keep sharing these videos and telling your friends. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's going to help me out so, so much. Please like the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.